The Small Business Show, episode 318 for Wednesday, March 10th, 2021. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where small businessing is an action. It is what we do every day, and this show is about small businessing by four small business owners here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm good. If you could follow that intro, more power to you. <laughs> There's some verbal gymnastics there. But there were some gymnastics. I feel like maybe I fell and didn't stick the landing, but you know, well, better luck next yeah, time. You're yeah. good. Yeah, that's right. It's great. It's always, <laughs> always good. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, go ahead. I know I was going to say I, they are, they are not a sponsor. In fact, we don't have a sponsor for this episode and I am not mentioning them because they were in the past a sponsor, but LinkedIn jobs is fantastic, uh, man. I spent great. just over a hundred bucks and got 50, 60 candidates for this podcast producer position that uh, I was talking yeah. about a couple episodes ago. Yep. Um, and I would say of those, about 20 of them are like on paper anyway, realistic candidates that we're going to talk with and, and, you know, narrow it down from there. Oh, that's great. Which is great. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to hear that. It's so, always tough to find good people, man. It, it is. Yeah, it is. And we've, we've talked with a few people and like, there's some, if we had to pick from the very small number of people we've talked with, we would have the right person, like, or we would have a right person, whether we have the best person yet, it's hard to say, right? That's why you talk to True. multiples, but, uh, yes. but yeah. And so I think, right. I, and again, I don't say this because they were a sponsor, but they were, and their code still yeah. works. So you can save 50 bucks at LinkedIn jobs. Oh, if you go to sweet. LinkedIn.com slash SBS again, they're not sponsoring this episode, but, um, but you can, well, you can benefit great. from it. So happy to, uh, happy to mention it, especially when, when it works. That's, 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 that's the terrific. key, right? It, it works. Yeah, yeah exactly. Really good. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I'm excited this week, Dave. I'm going to plug my book for real quick. I, I was just happy to see my eBay unlocked, uh, book hit number one, new release in the entrepreneurship category up on Amazon yesterday. It's pretty Congratulations, cool. man. That's yeah, awesome. Very excited. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm really happy. And I, 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 like I posted on LinkedIn, I learned so much about what is going on with that publishing business with, you know, those, uh, uh, small business pocket guides that we yeah. produced here. And I think we're gonna have a new one coming out in the coming months, all about employment and employment uh, yeah, there you go. to, yeah. uh, to seeing yeah. that. It's yeah. Great. It's good stuff. But today we're going to talk about naysayers. The oh, people that, the yeah. people that are the non-believers, right? I love the non-believers. <laughs> I do too. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about them on this show all the time in the, you know, oh, you got to stay away from these people and everything. But, uh, y you and I were having a conversation via Slack and talking about how those people can really motivate you. They're my fuel thought, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I thought it'd be great to do a show and talk about, how you use them for fuel and how you kind of maneuver around those folks. Cause sometimes you just can't get rid of them, right? They're part of your life. They're part of your life. Yeah. Well, you're, you're as an entrepreneur, you are always quite frankly, I think regardless of what you do for a living, you're going to run into people that will tell you what they, what they say is you can't do that. Not, not, you're not allowed to, but you will, you will yeah. not succeed doing that. What they're saying is I would not believe that I could succeed <laughs> yes, doing that. That's exactly right. Right. And it's yeah. not even that they couldn't succeed. It's that they believe no. they wouldn't. So, right. you know, it's a lot of projection that goes on there. Yeah. But, they're talking about the, that. And that's a critical thing to understand at the get go. But, yeah. you know, really before we take a, a, a deep dive into this is that it is projection. It, they're telling you what they think about themselves, not about you. It's, it, they have nothing to do with you. No, about well, they, ability, they don't see you know. the world through your lens. They see it yeah. through their lens. It's, it's not in a sense, it's not their fault that they see the world this way. I mean, it sort of is, we choose our yeah. own path and sometimes it's chosen for us and you know, but, but it's just how it, it's, it's how it goes. You, you see through things through your lens that I'm sure people say, Oh man, this guy, no, he's wrong. But you know, it's yeah. like, what are you going to do? Well, I, and and at this on the, on a similar note, I think that we all have our own risk profile right? Yes. Uh, of what, like, I, I don't like going on roller coasters because it just scares me to death, yeah, but taking big risks in business and rolling the dice, uh, you know, calculated, of course, yes. uh, 
taking, you know, risks there, I have no problem doing that. And that scares a lot of other people. So your risk profile, I guarantee is very different as an entrepreneur than someone that is going to be a naysayer. That's probably true. I mean, I feel like I am more risk averse than I should be. Uh, it, but maybe it happens as you get as you get older and have had some success. I think that does happen. Uh, maybe that's true. Yeah, maybe that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I've noticed that uh, similar. Okay, I'm not going to even try to say it again. Uh, like that, like you. As I've gotten a bit older, uh, you know, built up my charmed life. I start thinking a little bit more about okay, how much can I risk? You know, yeah. I can't take wipeout risk anymore. Right when I was in my 30s. Uh, I could, okay, well, if I burn it all to the ground, I just build it back up. But I I don't think I want to do that again now that I'm in my fifties. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the type of comments you're going to hear from, you know, folks that are just not, uh, the non-believers, if you will, you know, the typical, that's not going to work. One, I always love, if it's such a good business idea, why hasn't anyone else done it? That's a favorite. Oh, uh, yeah. a, another one, you know, maybe you should stay in your lane and focus on one thing. Cause I, as soon as I started to have success with one company, I wanted to go start another one. Sure. And that kind of freaked people out and it can look kind of flaky, uh, which I hate, but if the, you know, the best revenge is when you start having success with that other business as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and the one that I really feel, I, I don't have any tattoos, but I feel like I should have this one is the, with a big slash through it is that you should be more realistic. And my advice to everyone is, as you've heard me say more and more is you get to build your own reality Yeah. as a small business owner. You, you are being realistic. Your own. It's just yours. That's right. Yeah. My reality as an entrepreneur, uh, building your charmed life is very, very different from someone that's saying, telling me to be more, more realistic. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so I love that one. Um, and you know, the, the other thing I think it's important is I think those kind of comments tell you something when, when you start hearing them, I think you're on the right path to doing something that's unique, meaningful, and from the outside anyway, other people will eventually think is remarkable. Right. Yeah. Because it goes against the grain so much. And I think you should really embrace that and kind of wear it like a badge of honor. You know, the more people, what is that? Uh, there's a Gandhi quote or something. It says, you know, first they laugh at you and then they, I don't know, fear you and then they celebrate you. Right. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really true. And, and, and I've seen that. And uh, I would say that if you're not hearing these kind of comments, maybe you're not pushing the envelope far enough first they ignore you then they laugh at you then they fight you then you win yeah i love that (laughs) that's That's, good that's powerful yeah (laughs) yeah and you know and then one of the other things is that uh we did a show just a, a couple weeks or a few weeks ago all about uh kind of patting yourself on the back and thinking about your accomplishments because no one else is we based it on that elon musk quote about if you need encouragement, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yes. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of phrased it as you, you should shield yourself with success and no matter how small that success is. And I would encourage you to go back to that episode if you missed it. And, and we talk about that a lot when you internally recognize your own accomplishments. I, I find it myself easier to dismiss those kind of negative comments because I know they're not right. And I know that, look, I had a little bit of success, you know, uh, you could, you know, my, I always make the phrase or make the comment when people come to me for help starting a business or they want to sell a product, which is what I, you know, know a lot about. It's like, okay, let's figure out how you first have, can make, make a hundred bucks, make 500 right. bucks. I, because if, if you can get there, you're on, on your way. That is one of the best pieces of I mean, it's advice, but I, I treated it like a brain hack when, when you first said it to me years and years ago, uh, that, that idea folks of, can you figure out how to make a hundred dollars? Can you figure out how to make $10 doing this? Right. <laughs> and if you can, then, okay, scale that to a hundred now scale yeah. that to a thousand. And it really, it helps to put that in perspective. I I think I know that so much of what holds each of us back individually is ourselves. And it, it comes from our perceptions of the world that we're given growing up and things like that. 
And if you're, if you want to stay in the same world that you grew up in, that's relatively speaking easier than breaking into a world that is the next level up or the next level up. And I, I credited for a long time and it's true. I credited my computer consulting business with me stepping up a few notches, not because I was paid. I mean, I was paid fairly well as a consultant, but that wasn't enough to, to step me up. But every single day I was in people's homes who were living lives differently than what I had grown up around. And I grew up, I mean, I was very well taken care of, but you know, my parents did a great job and all of that stuff, but you see what you see and that's normal. And then being exposed and truly being in these people's homes and over time being in these people's lives, you know, I would, I would go and see the same client, you know, it might be once a month to help them with something. And I'd get to know these people. And in a sense, a few of them mentored me without even knowing it. They were just Uh, an influence on me, if you will. And it really makes a difference. Just exposing yourself to those types, to things that are beyond what you would normally see in your, you know, in your normal daily life makes a huge difference. I, yeah, I, and, for and me, I, it did anyway, but, but yeah. you're, but you sort of, you your phrase about, you know, if you can make a hundred, make a thousand, it's like, oh, right. It, it's that same sort of thing. It helps to frame that this is doable. It's not impossible. It is. Right. Yes. Because you can do it's that. It's actually math. very simple. <laughs> it's very simple. You can do that math up to a million bucks, right. Or beyond yes, or can. 10 million. And yes, you can. And, and it's, it's the same math. It's the same mindset. Uh, but it eliminates, it, it's a very, uh, very fine meshed filter Mm -hmm. because I can't, I couldn't tell you uh, count the number of people that have come to me that when I tell them to go do that exercise, they, they have a hard time doing it. Oh, they're maybe good at raising money, maybe good at buying uh, things to resale, which is kind of in my wheelhouse. Yeah. But can you go out, find a little, a niche, build a business, you know, kind of a, a, a system around it to yeah. fulfill and all that kind of stuff and just start making a, a little bit of money. And if you can, that's just a great thing to have in your back pocket where you're like, Oh, I know this works. Now yeah, I'm just going to work on scaling. Works. I know that's it works. It. Yeah. 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 yeah and no at, what you, anybody says. when we, um, when we failed at selling our deals on the web uh, business, our website, uh, yep. part of that failure involved meeting with Alan Meckler, who at the time was CEO of Jupiter Media, uh, he had been he he lived in the same area that I grew up in, and so I had known people who had worked for him. I knew about his companies, Meckler Media, and things like that, but I'd never met him until that day. And it was him and his attorney that I went and met with to negotiate. We had lunch, but it was you know I brought our, but yours and my Shannon, our list of demands and deal points that we needed. And of course, I'm sitting across the table from these two guys that are running a public company. And I was, I felt and was very much outclassed, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I knew that I had to be really careful because these guys are professionals. They do this deal stuff like buying right. and selling companies all day long. But, it, it, you know, I, we had the meeting and it went fine and we got what we needed out of it, although the deal never wound up happening. And of course, I called you the moment I got to the car after lunch and I explained to you a few of the things that these guys did. They, there was something that came up where they were talking about how they, they would buy domains. Like when they, they wanted to buy a, a domain for, you know, for uh, one of their companies or something, it wouldn't be Alan calling these people. He would have his attorney do it personally and he would do the whole transaction personally. So it never had anything associated with the company or anything like that. So that the price would be a person to person price. And then of course, as soon as he finished, he would transfer the asset into the company's, you know, uh, property and, and the company right. would reimburse him for it. And all was said and done. It was all good. And I, I just happened to relay that to you. And you said to me, man, those guys are just like us. Like they're, they're, they're hustling the same way we do. They're just doing it at a bigger scale. And, right. and that was another one of those moments where it was like, oh, I was, I was really glad you weren't there for that meeting so that you you had this outside perspective to say like, dude, they're just like us. Now you may have said that even if you were there. I don't know, yeah. but it was one of those moments where I was like, right, they're doing the same thing as us. Yeah, that's yeah. a powerful that's, thing. That's, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, if you can, like, you know, sometimes you can't remove these people, but if you can build this positive support system, you know, uh, 
it's great. And obviously you want to surround yourself with people to support. You don't want just yes people around you telling you how great everything is, but we're going to talk a little bit more about, yeah, Yeah. me too. We're going to talk a little bit more of that in a few minutes, but um, if you can't remove them, if they're close or family or whatever, then I would suggest you just need to shut up and, and, and until it's obvious what a badass you really are, because it'll just happen by osmosis. You know, don't bring things up. Don't talk about it as much. They will bring things up and you could just kind of let it out a little drips and drabs at a time. And, Oh yeah, I did this. We were doing this. We're doing that. And they will eventually see that you are going to succeed. And oftentimes they'll just flip right into being excited for you. And, and it, it brings up another point I was going to make it at the end, but this is a good segue is, I think you should, you also need to identify what is genuine concern versus somebody that's just a naysayer, right? Um, you have to be objective and, and you also need to look at who's bringing up what may be uh, an uncomfortable truth about, you know, maybe you do have to move on from some idea, some business, but you can look at their credibility. Have they supported you in the past? Are they always a naysayer? Yeah. You know, you don't want to turn away from all those critical comments and negativity because that's going to make you stronger as well right right uh, but just don't let it stop you you could certainly adjust and change and and pivot or whatever fancy term you want to uh to come up with but you need to assess who's having that conversation with you because you, you to kind of to that comment of being surrounded by people that always say yes that's not going to help you either no right? No, but you're right. Everybody wants to back a winning horse. So as yeah. soon as they know that you are that, then, oh, we've supported them all along. We've watched them, you know, <laughs> grow. Awesome. Like, which is great. Yep. It's great. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. And, and I would, I would suggest that at that point, you should graciously not point out how they didn't, you know, whatever they thought it wasn't going to work or whatever. No. Cause that doesn't get you, get you anywhere. Just say, great. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you. That's <laughs> easy say, for us to say is, as, as people, who aren't young anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know when I, when I, when I was younger and by that, I mean, you know, maybe six months ago and before that uh, I would definitely point out to these people. Yeah. You, you know, you didn't really support me. Like that's a bunch of BS people, but you're totally right. It's much better to be just keep that stuff to yourself. It's, it doesn't, yeah. there's no benefit. <laughs> it's just, it's just more fuel for you. Right. That's right. You, you just, you know, inside that, Hey, you know, this person didn't support me, but now look, but now look, great. And you, yeah. you've turned them, you've persuaded them That's by it. your actions and, yep. the, and the results. Yep. Um, and I, you know, just a couple more things that I have, you know, one is a, a, an issue that I have personally had is when I was getting started out, there were certain people, uh, family members and stuff that were just not the most positive about I, it was going to succeed. Family members of my partner, one of my first companies. I think you have to stop looking for affirmation from these people. But the, it, mm. the, it's an easy sentence, but it's very, I, for me, it was very difficult to do. It's really common to want to please the people that you can't. Yeah. Uh, you know, that they're the most negative in your circle. And you just have to... Uh, you know, try to focus and stop that. Just don't yeah. do it because some of those folks you're going to turn naturally, like we're just talking about by your actions, but some of them you're never going to turn and that's okay. That's their out, outlook, their perspective on things, but you have to get away from trying to, uh, to argue the fact or talk about things. It, it, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. I no, agree. It's not yeah. worth it. So yeah. um, one of the last things I have, Dave is, no matter what happens, you just kind of keep focused on building this system. You know, we always talk about, you know, systems on this show. We had, uh, oh man, his name's escaped me. The uh, systemology guy um, from Australia. Anyway, we'll, we'll link it in the, in the show notes. He published a book called Systemolo- Systemology, right? Uh, yeah. David Jennings. Um, that's it. Episode 275. I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a great episode to listen to. It's a great book. Uh, it's, it's all about not focusing on goals for your business, but building, you know, ever improving systems. And you got to think about what you're trying to achieve, right? And you're, you're trying to build on those small accomplishments every day. That's part of your system. Yeah. Don't get sidetracked trying to convince people that you're right or that you're correct. Just do what you believe in. See if it works. Uh, shift a bit, change things up when you yeah. find things that don't work and and just don't get sidetracked by the naysayers. Yeah. Don't get sidetracked by the naysayers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. it. it but they can really be that fuel 
if you, if, yeah, if I like you that let them put that chip on your shoulder, like the, and, and because as long as that chip isn't going to weigh you down, right? Don't let it be distracting, but let it be that thing that like, okay, I'm going to prove to them. And then once you prove to them, let it go. That's the trick, yeah. <laughs> right? Because if yeah. you don't, that's when that chip wears you down, right? But, you know, prove to them and then watch them turn and be like, yep, look what I just did there. That's great. I don't right. need to tell yeah. them I just turned them because that would undo all no. of the the hard work yes, that I just did. Exactly. <laughs> right? That's the secret. That's you, the secret. It's, it's, you you, know, you got to keep it internally. It's like, oh, look at that. And that's your own internal accomplishment. That's something that gets you through, especially when, you know, times are challenging or hard. You, you're thinking... Look at I, you know, now I've got this person on our side, and, yeah. and it's, you know, hopefully you don't have a a naysayer like really. Cl- it's tough if you have one as a spouse or a partner. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that one. Um, I I can remember being in college and we had this class called like senior seminars. We we're getting ready to get out of school, and a, a, an entrepreneur came in and he talked a lot about you know success, failure, and he drew this picture on the on the the white well, it was a chalkboard back then <laughs> on the white the whiteboard where he had this line and that one end was a cliff and he said okay as an entrepreneur you're out here right on the edge of the cliff where is your partner you know where is your spouse and he you know he's like in my life it was way back here and he yeah. drew this picture you know picture of a person way 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 back from the cliff and he's like it just never worked for me and uh you know in the end it just it fell apart so you know, if you're planning on being an entrepreneur, I, I hope you have the opportunity to meet someone during that entrepreneur phase that, uh, you know, can help you and help accelerate your, you know, your building the system of success. So it's good advice. It's, uh, it's, yeah. it's important. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's good stuff. We'd love to hear about what you've done to convert naysayers or to, you know, get through when you had, it's, you know, and sometimes it's really not good when it's like your banker or something like that that can cause you know additional it, problems. If but, that's the case, you get a new one. There's yeah, plenty there of bankers go. out there, right? You you yeah. don't you don't need that um, unless it's again unless it fuels you and you're like, all right, well this guy is going to see my numbers all the time yeah. and well, I'm going to show him, and and that can really that can be really powerful. So you got to use it. You got to you know it, it it's it's that trick of using your ego and and then putting it away. Right. Yeah. Ramp it up, ramp it up, bring it back down, bring it back down. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear your story. Uh, Talk about how you've gotten through it. And, you know, I haven't asked for a review for a while. We'd certainly love to get your review of the small business show. It'd take you about 30 seconds. Go to businessshow.co slash reviews. And that's about as close as we can get you to your podcast uh, app. But uh, go in and leave us a review and let us know what you think. Yeah. Please do. We'd, uh, yeah, we'd love to have your review. Let us know feedback at businessshow.co and uh, I don't know, I keep living that charmed life. That's all I got to say got for it. today. Yeah. We'll yeah. see you next week. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening, folks. Thanks for all the great comments. Thanks for things. Things are, we were looking at the numbers. Things are going up. It's good. It's, it's It seems like we're doing things together here. See you next time. <laughs>